Shalom, Shalom, Israel's brother Zahab Ayala coming back at you with another cold cut. I like to uh, give our praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah. Double honors to the men out there on the highways and byways, pushing in truth and honesty and sincerity. The mighty Aqua laying down their necks like their mighty four, uh, foremothers for the ministry and also guiding their households in these last days. Shalom, Shalom. And to the mighty children as well, keeping these commandments and biting their parents' households and during all the, the peer pressure, the temptation in these last days, man, and the influence, man. Right. Hey, it's going to be a very quick cold cut on stop wasting days. Stop thinking you was going to get up every day, prancing around, not and, and it's going off. Right. And it's doing what you want to do and acting like there's no judgment for that. Man. Right. Let me get one more. Let me get one scripture kicking it off. Stop wasting days like you got another day on the earth guaranteed to you. You don't. Every day you should go 150 percent every day. You, you shouldn't. The Lord didn't wake you up today for you to half ass that day. For you to say you're going to get things done and not get things done, man. Right? The Lord should have killed you a long time ago. But he gave you an extra day out of his mercy. And you playing with it. Right, let's go to Ecclesiastes 8 and 5. That's Ecclesiastes 8 and 5. Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing, right? And a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. So a wise man's heart, he's going to, his mind... A wise woman's mind as well is going to think about time and think about judgment, right? Think about the different time, the different times they're in, and then okay, well, let me make a judgment based off that, right? Okay, I understand that we in the last days, so every day should count. All right, let me make certain judgments and let me move a certain way off that, right? We're not living in in the time of the, of the Akimena Empire, man. Huh? You're living in the last days, right? Anything the Lord allows you to get done, you got to get it done, man. Huh? Right? Hey, hey, to the best of your ability, whether it's your job, whether it's your household. Whether it's the ministry, whether you have a certain office, or whether any task that you have to do, the most I gave to you through his grace and mercy, you have to go as hard as you can at that, man. Essentially conquering the day. Let me go to the book. All right, because you, you, you can't be wasting days out here, man. You've got to go as hard as you can in all things. Let me go to Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. So whatever your hand finds to do, whether it's your occupation, why you, you, you talk about we in Esau's captivity, I'm not going to go as hard as I can at my job. Well, brother, you're going to lose your job. All right? Well, I don't, I don't want to work hard for so-called, right, man, I ain't a slave. Well, you're not a slave, yes, all right? But you don't have a paycheck either, all right? So, you know, you got to go as hard as you can at the things the most I allowed you to have. The most I allowed you to have that job. The most I allowed you to have, you know, to have your rib, to have your children. Brother, you know, you never see them. Right. You know, you, you don't you don't ever try to make time for them. You know, that's essentially part of your job. man. And you have to go as hard as you can raising up your household. Right. It says whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. The Lord didn't say go, go, go 50 percent. Do it with your might, man. 150. Right. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave where thou goest. Because once you touch that grave, once that body is laid six feet, six feet deep, man, once you bury it, it's over with. There is no going back to that. There is no, damn, I should have. I could have. Your spirit is in the spirit world with the Lord now. Right? And you got to wait till that kingdom come if you get that. Man. Right? So, what you, hey, on the earth right now, whatever works you can do, you got to do it with your might. Because the Most High is going to be judging your works. Let me go to Revelation 14 as well. The Most High is going to be judging everything you do on the earth. Hey, the commandments. You got to do that every day to the best of your ability. You got to have that discipline every single day to go as hard as you can when, when you don't want to, man. Right, this is Revelation chapter 14. Right, a lot of people like to say a lot of things when they feel like it. Right, when they feel good. But what about when you don't feel good? All right, this is Revelation 14 and 13. I start verse 12. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Yahweh in the faith of Yahweh Shah. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. For henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit. That they may rest from their labors, man. And they their works do follow them. So when you die, when you go back to that grave, you're resting, man. Right until the day of judgment. All right. But hey, until you rest, you gotta go, you gotta make it a reason for you to rest. You gotta go as hard as you can in this life, man. Right? And your works are gonna follow you up to the spirit world, man. Everything you've done on the earth, how hard you went, the intensity behind it, man. All right? The Lord hey, is gonna have that all in consideration and judgment when he's looking at your works, man. Right? Your works are going to follow you. Right? So what are you going to do on the earth? Huh? 
I'm going to go to First Corinthians chapter three. What are you going to do on the earth? How hard are you going? To, how hard are you willing to serve the Most High? Right, this First Corinthians chapter three and verse thirteen. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for that day shall declare it. Because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So every man's work is going to be revealed in that time, man. Every man's work. And some men, you can tell if their work has been sloppy. Like a teacher, she, if you hand her in a piece of paper, she can tell you've been rushing. You hand her in a piece of paper, she can tell if you have did it. And then you hand, you hand in that one student that hands in that piece of paper, she says, oh my gosh. Right? This, this student is going places. This dude, I can tell he's been very diligent. He has a lot of notes because he went as hard as he could on that, man. He gave it his all on that. And opposed to the other students that really didn't try as hard. That just kind of threw something together. You don't think the Lord's going to be able to see that? How hard you've been going and keeping his law? How hard you've been going and, and, and teaching his law? Brothers hit you up about the scriptures throughout the day. You kind of just... All right, you kind of just turn around, man. The Lord sees that as well. Or if the Lord's... Let me answer this brother back real quick. All right, I gotta get some reading. Man, okay, he texted me again. Let me answer this brother back again. All right, damn, I got another brother asked me. All right, let, let me go hop on the phone in fifteen minutes. All right, right? Are you are you trying your hardest, right, to tend to the ministry, or are you kind of just doing your thing, man? Huh? The Lord said, "You, hey, your work is gonna be tried by that fire, man." Huh? And the Lord coming back with that fire. Your works are gonna follow you to the uh, to the Most High. He's gonna be able to judge how hard you've been going on earth, man, huh? and what you've been doing on earth as well. Let me go to Ecclesiastes twelve and thirteen. The Most High gonna take everything into judgment. When the Lord says everything, that also means how hard you did it. Oh yeah, you know you gotta keep these commandments. We gotta keep the faith, and the Most High is gonna judge you by your works. Well, hold on, brother. What if you've been doing that at a fifty six percent level, and you haven't been doing that a hundred percent as as hard as you you know you could have? But you just half ask it. The Lord gonna take that into consideration as well. All right. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and, his, and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For the most I shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So the most I said he's gonna a bring every work into judgment whether it be good or whether it be evil man right every secret thing right the lord's gonna bring all of this into judgment how hard you've been doing it how long you've been doing it right what what you've been doing right the lord hey every single day the lord gets you to uh, grant you to wake up that's another day to go as hard as you can for the most high because his mercies is renewed every morning let me go to limitation chapter three This is the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, and I'll start at verse 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is angry every day, but his compassions are renewed every morning. All right? Psalm 7 11 tells you the Lord is angry every single day. When his compassions are renewed and his faithfulness is renewed every single morning. He grants you to wake up after you just went off last night. Huh? You went off a damn day ago. Huh? Right? And you know what you did was wrong. You're repenting and you do it again. And the Lord still woke you up the next day. Huh? Obviously, he didn't wake you up to fail. The Lord woke you up to go as hard as you can in keeping his law. Huh? Giving your mind wholly to the commandment. Right? Giving your mind all the way over to keeping his law and forsaking your own way. It's a fight in this thing. Right, this is what a second Edges chapter two. I mean, like a second Edges chapter seven. It's a fight, but you gotta fight to be the best. Man. Actually, let me go to Second Timothy, First Timothy. You know, it's like a Second Timothy two and three. Right, the Lord says, "Strive for the master." Right, it's Second Timothy chapter two and verse three. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. So, so you gotta be a soldier, but you gotta be the best soldier out there. No man that warreth. Entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Right, you gotta stay from the ways of this world, so you can have a one track mind. Verse five, and if a man also strive for masteries, how can you strive for masteries? You gotta be, you, you're not gonna. People that play in the NBA just don't want to just play in the NBA. They want to be the greatest ever. 
people that play in the NFL just don't want to be known for sitting on the bench and getting in the game at 636 left on the clock. No, they're trying to be the best ever, man. You got to be the best ever. You got to have that mindset every day. I'm going to grind as hard as I can for the Lord and for what I got to do and whatever the opportunity he gave me to provide for my family, for myself. And guess what? I got to be the best ever, right? I got to strive for the mastery. You got to be a master, man, right? And it says, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully, unless you're doing it according to the guidelines, man, right? So you got to strive for the masters. The Lord wants you to strive for the masters. The Lord gave you a gift. Let me go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. This is 1 Timothy 4 and verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth. It doesn't matter how young you are, man. If the Lord got you in this truth, hey, the Lord wants you to be a master, a strive for the master instead. Right? And it says, but be thou an example of the believers in word, right? In conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. And these are all the different offices. You got to be an example. How hard must you go, man, for that brother or sister that's looking up to you right now? Right? Using you as an example to see how hard they're going to go. Uh, well... He doesn't really try that hard. Try more. So maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't try my hardest. Maybe it's not that important. Okay, let me let me not go as hard as I can. But if they see you going as hard as you can, being zealous, doing what you got to do every single every single day, that's the consistency behind it. Doing it every single day, they gonna say, okay, I see how important this is. Let me. I got now. I got to go as twice as hard as him. Right? Didn't Elisha ask for a double portion of Elijah's spirit? Because he understood what it meant, man. Because Elijah showed him that example. Right? And it says, meditate upon these. It's like in verse 14, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by the pro pro prophecy with the laying on the hands of the presbytery. You have a gift in you that you can't neglect. If you neglect that gift, the most is going to give that to another, man. All right. And you will be spiritually back in the grave. All right. And it says, read Job chapter 33. All right. And it says, verse 15, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. He didn't say give yourself 50% to them. He didn't say give yourself 96%. I go 97%. I mean, that's okay. It's still 97%. No, the Lord said holy. When you have a whole of something, it's 100%. 100% or more. Right? And it says, yeah, and I said more, 150%. Right? And it says, verse 16, take heed unto thyself. So you got to beware of yourself. You got to watch over yourself because that you can get complacent. My damn coach used to tell me the opposite of great is good. What does that mean? Because once you become good, you get complacent. You don't want to be great. You are, you're good at being good. You're good at being average. I'm making, I'm doing, I'm doing decent. I'm okay. Now, if you want to be great, you got to get out of that mindset, man. Right? You, there's, there's billions of Israelites on the earth, man. You don't know how much more gold is true. Right? You fought, you competed with other Israelites on the earth trying to get this kingdom. Then the Lord said, one receiveth the prize. There's no participation points, man. Get up and do this work at a high level. Whatever circumstance you're in, whatever adversities the Lord decides to give you that day, hey, get over it and do your job. And don't just do your job. Do it with thy mind because you have a gift in you, right? And it says, Lord told you to meditate wholly upon these things. You got to kind of give some deep thought about this, huh? Take heed unto thyself and, under, and, un, and unto the doctrine. Continue in them for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. You will save yourself and those that hear and look at you, huh? Right? Let me end it off with this. You got to remember this. This Proverbs chapter 12. You know, which one are you? All right, this Proverbs chapter 12. And verse number 24. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. But the slothful man shall be under tribute. Are you a person that's going to be paying taxes or are you the person collecting the taxes? Are you the person bearing rule or are you the person handing out your money to the person that bears rule? Which one are you? There's only two. You have the people that pay the tribute and you got the person that collects the tribute. Where are you? All right. Well, how diligent are you? Are you the slothful man? Because your future's already your future's already there. And the Lord said, you're going, hey, you're going to be the person under tribute. Right? Or are you the hand of the diligent that's going to bear rule? Bro? Right? So I like to give our praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shago. Um, Lord willingly, you know, you are edified, took great notes, man. Right? Prepared your mindset for this day in serving Lord Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh. I like to give a mighty strong shalom.